Let's look at L'Hopital's rule, the conceptual introduction and one example. Uh, mainly the pitfalls with this are operational and um, doing the examples and all the variations, but I want to give a brief idea of why it might be true, which it is. So it's a rule about limits. It's a way to calculate limits and um, the most basic version, there's other versions, but the most basic is to look at a limit where it's an indeterminate form. It's really important that it's something you can't just evaluate simply. And uh, we're going to look at the case, which is most common, where it's quote zero over zero. Of course, that doesn't mean you're literally taking zero over zero, but it's like this example. Take the limit as x goes to two of say x squared plus x minus six over x cubed minus two x squared plus seven x minus 14. It's not obvious exactly what that is, but if you plug in two, what you discover is you get zero on the top, zero on the bottom. And we know how to deal with this particular case if you can factor and cancel. This guy, the x minus 2 factor on the top and bottom cancels out and it becomes easy to evaluate. But what if we can't do that? Um, there are some other algebraic techniques involving like square root, rationalizing square roots. There's really a lot of general things like with e's or ln's or cosine sine, things like that. So for example, this, this example here, limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus e to the 4x over sine 3x. Um, if you plug in x equals 0 on the top, you get 1 minus 1 is 0. If you plug in x equals 0 on the bottom, you get sine of 0 is 0. So this is not something where you could just plug in. And we just don't know how to deal with this yet. Well, so the general case, uh, at least for this kind of a 0 over 0 form, is you've got the limit of a quotient. It's very important that it's a quotient of two functions. Limit as x goes to a, whatever that is. And in fact, uh, a can be infinity, but we won't focus on that case. Such that the limit of the top is 0 and the limit of the bottom is 0. That's the case where it's indeterminate. So let me say something right at the start. I feel like it's really helpful to avoid a certain very, very common pitfall, is imagine you're not actually super interested in that final quotient, what that number is, but you're using this as a means to compare the two separate functions, f and g. Um, and this can be very useful. If this limit turns out to be 12, it turns out that when x is near a, f is about 12 times bigger than g. If this limit is 0, it means that f is a lot smaller than g. If this limit is infinity, it means that f is a lot bigger than g as x goes to a. And so you don't have to think of it that way, but that, uh, that mindset is going to avoid a, a very important pitfall soon. Okay, so let's look at the simplest case. Could we, could we look at this and with an eye to how could this have to do with derivatives and calculus? So the very simplest case, I'm going to let a be 0 just for simplicity. It's not super important at all that it be 0, but it just makes the formula a little simpler. And we're going to look what happens if f and g are just straight line functions. If they're straight line functions that limit to 0 at 0, they can't have any um, intercepts, so they're just one slope m1 times x and slope m2 times x. So the picture is like this. You just have two straight lines. Let's say f uh, is the top one, forgot to label it, sorry, and f and uh, g is the bottom one. Here I picked uh, 6x and 2x, I believe. Okay. And what happens if you take the limit of the quotient? Now, in this case, that the factor and cancel is done for us, and it's super, super simple. If you really have these as straight line functions, then the limit of mx, m1x over m2x, the x's cancel, and you just get this constant m1 over m2. Um, and so, done. It's, and in particular, it's the limit, um, it's the ratio of those slopes. Okay, so the limit there of the quotient, the comparison is the ratio of the slopes. Well, slope of a line sounds maybe like slope of a tangent line. So what do you have in general? The graphical picture, more generally, is you might have two curves. Uh, let me make one of those bold, actually, just to make sure um, we can see which one's which. Okay, there we go. Okay, so maybe this is f, the steeper one, and this is g, the less steep one, the, the, the not bold one. And we'd like to get, again, the limit of the quotient f over g, or in other words, compare these, the values of f and the bold with the values of g when x is really, really small. Okay, well, and we know what happens with calculus. When we zoom in, by taking the limit as x goes to zero, we're zooming into small, small, small x. When we zoom in, those are guys are going to appear really straight. Or in other words, we're going to use the, the fundamental principle of differential calculus. Sometimes we can just assume a curve is given by its own tangent line to a good enough approximation, especially when we're being told to zoom in near a certain fixed point. So let's draw those tangent lines. I set it up so the tangent lines were exactly 
just y equals 6x and y equals 2x from before. Um, and indeed, if you zoom in, I zoomed in not, a, not even a tremendous amount, just to where it's 1 instead of 5, they're starting to look a whole lot like straight lines. The actual curves are looking a lot like straight lines. So it's plausible that, in fact, the limit of the actual ratio of the actual functions might be the same as the limit of the m1x over m2x, the values of the tangent lines, and that's just the ratio of those slopes. That's the basic idea. And it's it's a little bit too simplistic because it, it wouldn't give you, that rule would not give you access to the full power of L'Hopital, but it's definitely suggesting that what we should do is analyze this f, notice separately, not combined with g, f and look at its derivative, in this case that's m1, and look at g separately, in this case, that's m2, and then take the ratio of those slopes. So it might, you, you would get, I think the, the rule you'd guess would be um, maybe the limit of a quotient in this case where it's 0 over 0, and it's very important, maybe it's just the ratio of f prime of 0 over g prime of 0. Okay. Well, sometimes that's true, um, and it does get a lot of the, the essential points. It's about a ratio of derivatives. Notice, and here's the pitfall I want to avoid, you're not taking the derivative of the quotient f over g. That's totally not what you're doing. You are separately taking the derivative of top and bottom and then taking the quotient. Quotient of derivatives, not derivative of quotients. Okay. But what this would suggest, though, is that if g prime of 0 is also 0, so we had, of course, we knew that g of 0, or the limit as, g went, as x went to 0 of g was equal to 0. Well, what if g prime of 0 is also 0? So, like, it'd be a version of this, this picture up here where one of those things was actually just flat and the tangent line was the x-axis, it would appear that, that we'd be out of luck there. But often we're not, because here's the more, the actual rule. And I'm not going to give the proof of the actual rule. Um, but here it is, that, uh, so if, here's the, the important proviso, if f and g are both going to zero, the functions themselves, so it's really a zero over zero in determinate form, then the limit of the quotient is the limit of the derivatives. So it's not that you plug in f prime of a and g prime of a. You actually still have a limit. You might be like, well, that's disappointing. It's still a limit. I wanted to get the limit out of there. But very often, this might be a simpler limit to calculate. And we'll show an example uh, in our example that I, I talked about before, how that works. Okay. So that's going to work as long as that latter limit actually exists. If it doesn't, then this isn't, um, uh, this isn't helpful for you. Okay, so um, two mistakes that you can make. Don't apply it if it's not indeterminate. Don't apply it unless the top's going to zero and the bottom's going to zero. Um, and don't do the quotient rule. This is not about that. Okay, there's lots of variations. Take a look in the book's examples, and we'll do examples for that. But here's our, here's our example I started with. We take the limit of this is f, 1 minus e to the 4x, and this is g sine 3x. We just take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. What happens in this example is the top is no longer going to zero. Now that's that doesn't really matter that much. It's a, it's about the bottom that's crucial, um, but the bottom is no longer going to zero. Ah, that's really helpful. Okay, so the limit of this top over bottom we can plug in. So it's a little bit like how factor and cancel gave us something that we rewrote a fraction in a way that the bottom wasn't going to zero, the denominator, and that just gives us minus four thirds, and we are done. And that is super easy. And that's where I'll stop.